Hi, this is Presh Talwalkar. You probably had to memorize the times table in school. It's an arrangement of numbers that tells you how to multiply two numbers between 1 and 10. For example, if you wanted to take the product of 7 and 8, you would look in the 7th row and the 8th column to get the result of 56. So here's a puzzler for you. Solve in 30 seconds. What is the sum of the numbers inside of a multiplication table? That is, what is the sum of all the numbers that I've drawn inside this box? Give this puzzle a try, and when you're ready, keep watching the video for a solution. Alright, so I'm going to solve this problem algebraically, and then I'm going to give you a geometric intuition of why the formula comes about. So we're going to look for some patterns. So let's just take the first row of numbers, and let's say that if we add it up, we get a result of s. We're going to eventually compute s, but for now, let's just say the sum of the numbers from 1 to 10 is s. Since every number in the second row is twice every number in the first row, the sum of the numbers in the second row will be 2 times s. Similarly, every number in the third row is 3 times every number in the first row. So the sum of the numbers in the third row is 3s. This pattern will continue, and each row will be a multiple of the sum of the numbers in the first row. So we can sum up all the numbers inside the table and write it in terms of the sum of the number in the first row. The sum of all the numbers will be the sum s times all these multiples 1 to 10. But then s is equal to the sum of the numbers from 1 to 10. So therefore, we end up with the the sum of the numbers from 1 to 10 squared is the sum of all the numbers inside the box. So how are we going to sum the numbers from 1 to 10? There's a formula. If you sum the numbers from 1 to n, the answer is n times n plus 1 over 2. You may remember this formula, or you can click on the formula, and I presented a kind of funny way how you could get this, presented in a historical fiction way, including a mathematical tournament with Gauss. So if you apply this formula for 10, the sum of the numbers from 1 to 10 is 55. So we need to square 55 to get the sum of all these numbers. There's also a trick for this, and you can click on this link. You may have seen my video. To square a number ending in 5, you take whatever values in the tens digit, or whatever leading numbers there are, multiply it by one more than itself, and then append 25. So I would look at 55 squared, and I would say there's a 5 in the tens digit, so I'd multiply 5 times 6, because 6 is one more than 5. So 5 times 6 is 30, and then I would put 25 at the end. So I'd get 30, 25 is 55 squared. And that's our answer. So that was the algebraic way. Now I want to give you a geometric interpretation. So the number 1 in the times table is 1 times 1. We can draw this geometrically as a square that has sides length 1. The number 4 is 2 times 2. So we can draw that as a square which has a side of 2. We'll draw 3 times 3 of 9 as a square which has a side length of 3. And I'm going to proceed drawing all of the squares of these numbers. And in general, I'm going to represent the product of two numbers x and y as being a rectangle with side lengths x and y. And we'll start out with the squares. So we've drawn out all the squares in our table. And now we can have a geometric version of our times table. If I draw horizontal lines and then vertical lines for each of these squares, this is actually a geometric times table. You can look at any two numbers and the corresponding square in that row and that column will have an area 
we'll have an area that's equal to the product of those two numbers. So now, what's the sum of all the numbers inside the multiplication table? That corresponds to the geometric problem as what is the sum of all these rectangles? So what's the area of the big square that we've just created? Well, this square has a side length. One side is, each side is the sum of the numbers from one to 10. So the sum of all the numbers inside the multiplication table will be the sum of, will be the sum of the numbers from one to 10 and squ squared. So that'll give us the area of the big square and the sum of all the numbers in the times table. So once again, we have the problem, how do we sum up numbers from one to n? I'll take a simpler problem. Let's look at the numbers one to four. If we have a unit square, which has side length one, we wanna add up one, we wanna add up two of them, then three of them and four of them. So what's the area of the shape? Well, I'm going to do a trick. I'm going to copy the shape and then I'm going to rotate it and combine the two shapes. So now we've created a rectangle which has one side length, one side of four and another side of five. So the sum of the numbers will be half of this rectangle. So the sum from one to four is half of a rectangle with sides four and five. So this will be four times five divided by two, which is 10. We can generalize this pattern that the sum of the numbers from one to n will also end up with a rectangle that has sides n and n plus one, and we want half of that. So the sum of the numbers from one to n will be n times n plus one over two. So now we'll wrap up the problem. The sum of the numbers up to 10 will be half of a rectangle with side lengths 10 and 11, which is 55. And then to find the sum of all the numbers, we simply square 55, which once again gets us to 3025. But that's the reason we end up squaring the numbers from the sum of the numbers from one to 10 is because essentially we are finding the area of a square which has a side length of 55, which is going from the sum of the numbers from one to 10. Did you solve it? Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel. I make videos on math and game theory. You can catch me on my blog, Mind Your Decisions, which you can follow on Facebook, Google Plus, and Patreon. You can catch me on social media, at Presh Talwalker. And if you like this video, please check out my books. There are links in the video description.